Okay, so you know you want to paint. You have this really great idea and you're trying to express it onto your canvas. But you've never painted before. But maybe you have painted and everything is a little bit confusing still. There are so many products to choose from. What kind of brushes do I use? Do I use a flat brush? Do I use a round brush? How am I going to accomplish what is in my head and get it out onto the canvas? Those are all really great questions. I'm here to talk to you today about which brushes do what so that you can understand how to apply them to make the mark on your canvas that you're trying to get. Sometimes we go to the store and we have very high expectations of what the salespeople can help us with. I know for one, when I go into my local art store, I expect them to have all the answers. Sometimes this just isn't true. Real quick, I'm going to show you an example of what you're up against when you're trying to select your brushes. These are your brush options. Okay, so there's a lot of brush options. What does this mean for you? Well, I guess you could ask the salesperson if she could select a brush for you. But say you already kind of have an idea going on in your mind. Okay, I want to make a landscape. What brush would I use? This is our biggest fan. That's awesome! Great! A fan brush! What can I use that fan brush for so I can accomplish what's in my head? I have no idea what this is for. So even though the sales girl really knew what type of brushes she had, she didn't really know how to use them. It's fine to not know how to do something, but why don't we take a closer look at the different types of brushes that can help you along your artistic journey. Before we dive in, let's discuss what our brushes are made out of. Back in the day of the Renaissance painters, brushes were made out of animal hair. Much can be said about the brushes that are made today. However, a lot of brushes that you can find at your store are made of a synthetic material, not animal hair. The most famous of brushes that are made out of animal hair are the hog's hair bristle brushes, much like those used for an underpainting in oil, and the Kalinsky sable. These brushes actually get their name from the sable weasel. The soft tuft of hair located at the back end of the weasel make up the bristles of the Kalinsky sable brush. In order to protect the species, the United States has made it illegal for these brushes to be imported into the country. We're going to be working with synthetic brushes. It is important to remember when you're working with brushes that brushes come in different sizes and shapes. The size of the brush will be located numerically, meaning in a number somewhere along the top or bottom of the brush. The larger the number, the larger the brush. The type of brush or name of the brush is located somewhere along the bottom of the brush, but can vary between brands. I picked up five different types of brushes while I was at the store. I had Kate, the sales girl, go over what those brushes were called. This is a round brush. They're great for doing detail and line work. Angled. Angled brushes are known for their angle. They create nice sharp lines and edges. Fan. Fan brushes are probably the most fun. They can create texture on a painting, or nice thick lines to work from. Filbert. The filbert brush is rounded on top but shaped like a flat. This is a great brush for filling in large areas on your canvas. Flat. Flats are great. You can either use them for detail in a square or line type of situation or as a shader to fill in negative space. Awesome! So now I have my brushes, but I still don't know what kind of line they're going to make on my canvas and whether or not I need that line to accomplish what I'm doing. So first off, we're going to start by taking a little bit of water and getting our brush nice and wet before we dip it in our paint. Just going to make sure our paintbrush is nice and saturated, meaning has a lot of paint on the bristles. First I'm going to start off with my round brush. Like I said before, you can do a lot of detail with this brush. You can make very thin lines or you can go and make relatively thick lines. Try different pressures with your round brush.
Try different patterns with your round brush. I'm going to show you how to fill in a circle. It's okay if you make a mistake. Paint is very flexible. You can always go over it if you Okay, now I'm going to start working with the flat brush. Remember the flat brush can make nice thick lines. By turning the flat brush over on its end to make a nice straight line, you can see how sharp and small that detailed line can be. Let's try to do a circle with the flat. It ends up fighting the paper a little bit. I couldn't even finish all the way around. Next we'll try filling in. Remember this brush is great with filling in large negative space. Next we're going to work with an angled brush. Going against the angle, the flat side of the brush creates a nice thick line. Going with the angle creates a small detail line. Let's try to do that circle again, this time with the angle brush. The bristles fight because they don't want to go in a circle. Next I'll try filling in that circle. Again, filling in big chunks of space is great with the angle. Try different ways of using your brushes. The angle will surprise you with its nice contours. Let's try out the fan now. You can see how beautifully it coats the canvas with a nice flat line. Let's try it on its side, shall we? Still a pretty thin line. Now let's try flipping it around and see what we get. Okay, here's the filbert. The filbert always is going to have that small rounded edge when you first lay it down. Let's try the filbert on its side. It's a nice straight line, but it's a little thick. Let's try a circle with a filbert. Oh, I'm starting to get the picture. The more round the brush is, the easier it makes that circle. And the filbert does a great job of filling in. Next, let's get started. I'm using acrylic paint and a canvas board to start. Let's put our brushes to work now. I'm starting with the angles because I really love the way when I turn it on its side, it creates these beautiful lines. Next, I'm going to use the filbert. I really love how much coverage I get, and the fact that it's rounded makes it really easy to fill in the contour of my previously painted lines. I'm going to take back out my angled brush and show you really quick that I'm continuing to make those sharp contoured lines. And I'm going to fill in again with my filbert. It's okay to make mistakes and
Keep in mind it's okay to make mistakes while you're working. Next I'm going to use a flap because I really enjoyed the coverage that it gave me when moving the paint around. This will work great for my sky. I'm not going to go too close to my mountain range because that's not the point of the flat. The flat is just to cover up a lot of negative space on my canvas. Next I'm just blending in some Next I'm just blending in some darker blue, kind of give a little bit of depth to my sky. You can try blending with your flat brush. Next I'm going to grab my filbert with some of the same sky color and do my closer... Next I'm going to grab my filbert and still fill in with the sky color. It's because it contours so well with those rounded lines that I wouldn't try to use my flat. It's okay to make mistakes, we're just learning. Next I'm going to use my flat once again to cover a large surface area with the green. This is going to be my grass. And one last time, I'm going to work with my filbert to get up really close to that mountain range. All right, jumping ahead, time to make a cute little tree. I grabbed my fan and I turned it on its side to get that really beautiful pattern. I'm just going to apply the paint gingerly and have a lot of fun in creating depth to my tree. It's okay to make mistakes at this point. We're just doing a quick trial run just to get a feel for our new brushes. Next I'm going to be working with my round brush. Remember the round brush is great at making those nice solid lines and for adding detail. Here I'm going to start making a log cabin. Here I'm adding the details into the log cabin. Remember, we're just experimenting with our brushes. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but this is a great start to a wonderful painting. I hope I was able to clear up a few questions you might have had about brushes and what they do. I'm going to keep on painting. I hope that you will check out other YouTube videos to answer your questions. See you later!